Gotcha games are a subcategory of mobile games that typically refer to a gotcha system. As you have probably heard, if you are watching videos on this topic anyway, the word gotcha refers to gotcha pawn, a vending machine that dispenses capsule toys. There are normally different levels of rarity for the toys inside of the machine, and you are always hoping the very next turn of the crank will give you that sweet, ultra-rare Mothman. The absurd popularity of these machines in Japan led to them being digitally adapted into games, many times appearing as mobile games, offering a wide variety of things to collect. Now how do you collect many of the things in these games? Gotcha, or gambling. Imagine having a gotcha pawn addiction and carrying around a pocket gotcha pawn machine. Every time you had enough money or felt your self control slipping, you could just pull out the gotcha pawn machine, inject some of your real life money for some fake in game currency, and then hope for that sweet dopamine release you get when you finally pull your favorite big titty waifu. As you can see, this could become a real problem for some people. Some people just lack self control, others are looking for that dopamine rush and others are just gambling addicts and sometimes these games will bring them into the fledgling stages of gambling addiction. You know what? There's gonna be fucking winners and there's gonna be fucking losers, my yeah. friends. Two years ago, Connecticut did, a, did an expose on 60 Minutes about waifu collectors who have just lost their fucking minds gambling. They installed these type of... Giant tits. That could just fuck with your mind. Let's examine some of the other ways that gacha games addict you. Number one, let's start with rewards. Gacha games give you rewards for everything. Rewards for opening the game, rewards for playing a certain amount of time, rewards for milestones in the game, rewards for not playing the game, which is called a return login bonus, comeback rewards to bring old players back to the game, rewards for inviting other people to the game, rewards for how much money you spend in the game, rewards for anniversaries, and probably more rewards that I am forgetting. Being rewarded for these types of things creates dopamine in the brain for doing almost nothing. If you are able to open a gacha game in the morning, get a guaranteed big titty waifu ticket, get a huge dopamine rush within a few minutes of waking up, your day is basically going to start at a peak and go downhill all day. That is, unless you have other gacha games you play or more summoning currency or another waifu to summon for. The second thing that these games do to addict you is simulated achievement and progression. One of the most addicting things about World of Warcraft is that it allows you to simulate progress or achievements. The more time you spend in the game, the more you feel like your character, or your waifus in this case, are growing, and growing with you. Turning a quest in on Warcraft and leveling up to level 10 for the first time creates a huge dopamine rush in the brain and simulates achievement and success. If you research how dopamine works online at all, then you know what this will cause. Your brain will reprogram itself to want that easy, accessible dopamine hit from leveling up to level 10 on WoW. This may cause a lack of motivation when it comes to achievements and progression in real life. Gotcha allows this on a large scale level. In most gotcha games, you collect a pool of units or heroes or waifus, whatever you want to call the in-game heroes or units that you collect. You are then tasked with leveling up these characters. This has different varying difficulties and requirements depending on which game you're playing. In one game, for example Dokkan, you can train your character using one button. In another game, you might use a strong unit and take the weak units with you, running a level over and over until your lower level characters are max level. This is known as grinding. You are then typically tasked with empowering the hero, whatever that is, through an awakening, an upgrade system, summoning more of the same unit, farming gold, real life currency, or farming gear in the game. With all of these different ways to spend time with your units and heroes, you begin to look at the time sink like it's something you've invested in. The same goes for spending money. You may be familiar with the sunken cost fallacy, which basically refers to not wanting to quit something because you have put too much time or money into that thing. I could have just as easily called this video sunken cost fallacy the game. The third thing that these games do to get you addicted is grinding. As I touched on in the previous point, all of the time you spend grinding and leveling up your units results in time and money spent. The real issue that this creates beyond the sunken cost issues is the time spent on these games. One thing to know about most gacha games is that the work is never done. There is always a new unit on the way, or a unit that you have not leveled up yet, or a big titty waifu you have not fully awakened to see all of her artwork. When I say this, some people watching the video will probably think to themselves that they enjoy the never-endingness of the games. I'm one who can agree with this and used to look for this in a lot of games I played. It was also probably instilled in me somewhat from my years in MMORPGs playing World of Warcraft and so on. It can start to become an issue when you spend more time grinding on the gacha games than you do on your actual life. Which leads me into my next point, dopamine overdose. Many gacha players, especially the newer ones, report that once they found a gacha game they liked and got into it, 
all other games seemed to lose their edge. They could no longer play AAA titles like Last of Us 2 or Horizon Zero Dawn, or even big MMOs like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV. They used to play console games and MMOs all the time, but since the gotcha got a hold of them, nothing seems to hold their attention. This may be one of the most insidious side effects of gotcha gaming, and dopamine in general. It is subtle. You are loving the gotcha game, so what's the problem? This game is so fun you can't even look at other games these days. This game is on your mind 24-7, and it's the first thing you think about when you wake up. When you go to sleep, you dream and wonder about what the new banner is going to bring and if you'll have good luck on it. So what's the issue? Well, ask yourself, is it really that fun? Is it that fun watching your units auto-farm the same stage that you've been farming for three months straight? Is it really that fun after you summon and get the new unit you want? Now that you have the unit, what do you do? And why? Is popping the bubbles in this game and then watching the animations more fun than playing a triple A title? Even from the same genre or the same anime? It certainly cost me more, but I love this game. I play it every day. It's my digital collection. And I think that that is where the problem stems from is people like me who are game collectors and just like to collect things in general. I feel like this targets me and I want to collect almost everything in the game. And how do you collect everything in the game when you have fear of missing out is you have to spend money. What if one day the game shuts down? Most people will say, at least you had fun. I think this is where we try to comfort ourselves with a quote like, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Do yourself a favor. Go sit down, play a console game. One that has good reviews. If you're into anime, Persona 5 Royal was fantastic. Final Fantasy VII Remake is actually way more fun than you'd expect. The combat system in that game is great. You play one of those and go, wait, this was a $60 brand new game, but I spent $60 yesterday to get this much gacha currency and I didn't even get my waifu. Or for the Dokkan players, I didn't even get LR Vegito Blue. Of course, I'm a Gogeta fan. My next point is that they are distractions. Every time your focus is interrupted, it takes a certain amount of time to bring this focus back. If you were autoing on gacha games and you were required to take a look at the game every few seconds, minutes, or even a few times per hour, it could be causing major issues in your life or work. It takes nearly 30 minutes to refocus once you get distracted. Somewhere around 20 minutes, 23 minutes or so seems to be the consensus. So each time you're distracted, you don't do as quality of work as you were doing previously. Gacha games can also make you feel busy. This can result in important things like work, exercise, health, and so on feeling like extra work on top of your gacha grind. This can really mess with your mood and mental capacity all day. You only have so many fucks to give. In summary, what do these games do to you? In essence, what are the negative effects? Well, they take your money, they take your time, and remember, time is money. They simulate real life achievement and can kind of detract or demotivate you from actually achieving things in real life. They can turn people into gambling addicts or introduce people to the world of gambling. They can mess with people's emotions and they can distract you and cause lower quality of work or cause you to never get things done. And then what do they do for you? Well, I guess um, they do have incredible artwork and big titty waifu go burr. So there are those two things. Now, I will say the only actual acceptable gacha game on the entire market is Raid Shadow Legends. No, I'm playing. In all seriousness, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully there was some tidbit of knowledge in here or something that you learned from the video today. Leave me a like if you liked the video, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.